it's early, but my, oh my, we got right to the point on the early favorite. And I know it's one you're going to approve of, Corey. Yeah, it looks like Sam Williams is the early favorite. Uh, and that that's an interesting topic because we kind of discussed the idea of like uh, Demarcus Lawrence potentially is it, is it a progress stopper? Not saying Demarcus Lawrence isn't really good at what he does, but is Sam can Sam Williams do some more things to kind of uh, push even further in there? And then you know obviously Broadus is kind of like look what I'm seeing whenever they're lining up is Sam Williams on certain downs uh, across from Micah. Right. Demarcus Lawrence can move inside. There's lots of options here, and for this matter. Like, I completely understand the rotation of the NFL and especially this defense. Sometimes starting isn't necessarily as important. Sure. But when it comes, let's just say uh, your importance level on the team. Because right now, would you say Mozzie is ahead of Jonathan Hankins right now? First round pick. He's probably like. I would say no with the caveat that all logic says for sure he's going to be ahead of Jonathan Hankins. I just like, we just talked about that with Bryce Young, how they kind of like slow rolled it a little bit. So I'll say no. Help the me The logic out. that of course he will be. Has Hankins been to a training camp in his lifetime after his rookie deal? I feel like every year we've talked about Jonathan Hankins because he refuses to ever do a training camp <laughs> practice because he's like, kind of I'm a heavier like guy. I don't want to be out in the sun that much. Help me out. Um, I will start practicing the week before the season starts. Don't worry. I know what I'm supposed to do. Eat up two human beings when the ball is snapped and let the other people make the plays. And he can do that. So yes, I just wonder, will Mozzie, who will probably get more reps in training camp mm -hmm. uh, because Hankins doesn't want to do anything <laughs> when it comes to August. And then I just wonder if early on in the season, if you give it more to the veteran, almost like, and hey, in these four weeks, Mozzie's going to play 10 to 20% of the snaps, which might not be enough for Cowboy fans because he's a first round pick, but it's almost like we're easing him into it. We're letting him kind of see Hankins do it. We believe he has more talent than Hankins does, but he doesn't have the savvy yet to play against these NFL offensive linemen. But as the season progresses, he's going to get more and more savvy, understand a little bit more, and having Hankins in front of him is going to help. And then maybe you get to Thanksgiving and the roles flip. Yeah, no, I think, I think this is a really – Mike has a really good approach on that, and they could go either way with it for sure uh, on how many snaps go where and what is important snaps for those guys. I think, but as far as that goes, first round pick, what does Steven and Jerry typically tell us? They want to see those guys immediately make an impact. Now, I want to talk some more about Sam Williams, but I'm going to throw out we go to cut number 11. This. I think this pick is going to probably agitate some people, so I'm hoping that you'll hear me out on this. Go. Mills in the gun. Ogan Bowali is the back on his right. Back five steps. Throws it out quickly right. Broken up by Keldon Joseph. Chris Moore was looking for his eighth catch, and Joseph, who is now a starting corner, made the play of the day right there by knocking that ball loose and forcing a punt. Now, I want to point out, I a million percent understand how people feel about Kelvin Joseph, both in terms of lack of on-field production and too much production off the field, is they're trying, you know, they're kicking him around some because they're like, hey, this don't work, right? Mm -hmm. And so they try to, they've been trying him out a lot at nickel cornerback. And the question has become, can he be just not a special teams player? And that's why when I when you asked your question, I thought about him because I was like, well, that makes him more usable. Now, I realize the question then becomes is like, hey, we're pushing other people down. If Kelvin Joseph becomes a usable, viable starter at cornerback or whether you're just having him exclusively run nickel, which honestly you see almost all the time now, is I think that's an upgrade for the Cowboys. And so Kelvin Joseph is who jumped to mind for me. And, and I think the kind of the idea on that nickel corner too in, in that respect is ability to, you know, move left, right fast with the guy who's going to be in that slot spot, being able to cover. But whenever also, whenever you get asked to put your nose in there, you're willing to do it. I don't think there's any doubt that Kelvin Joseph is willing to be physical. It's just, can he play within the restraints of being a 
good cornerback as well because he just wasn't know. good. He wasn't good on the outside. Yeah. And and so in in that conversation, there's three names right now. One of them's Jordan Lewis, one of them's Deron Bland, and one of them's Kelvin Joseph. I keep an eye out on Pet Cat Project. I love when Broadus always brings pet cats to the table. Eric Scott. Uh, I think he's uh, an interesting name that they were able to acquire. I think he's a lot of fun. He's a bigger cornerback. Uh, I, th- I obviously am not going too far in saying he's ready to take over for Diggs. Sure. Uh, but I'm, I want to watch his Chief progression. Follow might say that. I want to watch his progression. Uh, I want to watch and see how quickly he picks this up. Nobody expected Bland to pick things up so quickly last year. But it seems like uh, Dan Quinn and it seems like Al Harris are pretty good at getting these guys on the page very quickly. So I'm interested. I, I like where you're going. Yeah. Not necessarily a starting spot, but can they be? Can they move their way up the chart this offseason? I like this too because I would like to see Eric Scott do it. I would like to see Bland take over for Jordan Lewis and Jordan Lewis not be just cast off as a misfit, but still be a usable product on this team. Sure, and... Even if he's not, like, I guess not just in this season, but longer term, then you're starting to work the system financially correct, right? Because, like, uh, Kelvin Joseph, for example, the next two years, $4.5 million. And you're like, oh, great. Yeah, that, that'll that'll work out entirely. Deron Bland, clearly not going to be particularly expensive whatsoever i think over the next three years he might make a total of three million dollars maybe 3.1 million dollars and so that's that's what you like to see right like i know the cowboys like to brag about how hey we re-sign all of our own draft picks and i get that is a great thing sometimes but sometimes i like the idea that you so consistently draft well all the time that you can let whoever go whether you think it's a bigger person like Diggs or Jordan Lewis, because you're like, we already got the next guy. And he costs a fraction of what that person costs, so we can go load up whatever other position you would like. I misread this so hard. I was reading through the Cowboys depth chart here a little bit, and I got to one of the, to John Stevens Jr. And I read it as Stephen Jones Jr. Uh And I was like, what is happening here? Um, I... There are a couple. Are you there's... joining the group of people that are saying Cooper Rush? I see. I no, see your come text on. saying Cooper Rush. Come on. I, I am interested, Kevin. I haven't quite looked over here. Where is Deuce Vaughn's name popped up? Because I don't. I'm not there yet. Okay. I'm not there at all. Even with Eric Scott, I'm. That's way far down the line. I'm not there with Deuce Vaughn, but I know a lot of people are in love with Deuce Vaughn right I now. I put Deuce Vaughn on a different level. Because what I what I would love to see happen, what I think a lot of people would love to see happen, is Deuce Vaughn overthrows whether you go Ronald Jones, Malik Davis, whoever. I because like Lord knows. Man. Rico Dowdle. Yes. This is one of my favorite times of the year, by the way, when they have all these people as the Cowboys be like, hey, look at our running back room. And they'll list at least one person in every position. You're like, who the hell is that? Yeah. And and so like They'll tell you how loaded for bear they are at running back. But wouldn't you love to see the reason why I would see love to see Deuce Vaughn move up in the world? Is that because that means the Cowboys used him the way he's supposed to be used? Mm -hmm. You know, the issue that I have had going back forever is, oh, let's draft a player. You're really good. Now you're not really good at what we do, but we'll work it in instead of going, hey, Let's draft this player who's really good at this particular thing that he does or skill set that he has and do that. Man, you're so right. This dude can hide behind an offensive line and explode for, for, for a big play. And that's why I hope... I'm not saying Deuce Vaughn becomes your start. I'm saying that's what I would love to see them use him and be <laughs> like, hey, you're good at this. Let's do that. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you on that. There, There is a... Got another one? The, yeah, go ahead. This might sound weird. Stay with me. All right. It's Terrence Steele. And I know you might be thinking, well, Terrence Steele is the starter. Right? Is he? Is he? Is he? So all logic dictates that the 
Yeah. It well, was funny this morning. Macho- Machota was on with Sean and RJ, and they said, "What's your offensive line?" And then he went steel first, and they were like left to right. We said, and he was like, "Okay, fine." Uh, but but then he really put out by that. But he he put it out there, and then he goes, "All right, now Tyron Smith gets hurt. What do you think is going to happen?" And he was like, "Oh, okay," because they were like. Look, three weeks in, you're probably going to have to re- reevaluate your offensive line or maybe even training camp. So this is interesting. Go ahead and roll your, your steel conversation out. And so the reason why I say that is all logic and reason would dictate that he's your starting right tackle. But then when you hear things about, well, you know, we've been seeing some Tyron Smith over on the right side, and then they can keep Tyler on the left side at the tackle, and maybe that's what you're going to do. But then the Cowboys also say we want the best five guys. And you hear a whole bunch of stuff, and sometimes it sounds like it's going to come down to Tyron is going to be your swing tackle. I have lots of questions about how that's going to work, but great. I support that. And then some people have got concerned because yesterday McCarthy said, we don't know if Terrence Steele will be ready for training camp, oh. which, which is crazy because all we've heard in the offseason is how far ahead of all the rehab he is. And I know front office people in sports never fib. So... I, I'm a little worried that maybe who's that a shot at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fine. We're gonna throw a bullpen. <laughs> is and, and so my concern is if he fell behind even a little bit, they would start to see the cohesion of the offensive line. Let's 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 just say go Smith and Smith on the outside yeah. tackles. Yeah, and they're like, hmm. Also, contract coming up. I feel like that's it's exactly un- where they are. I right feel now. like it's unlikely, but I want. No part of Terrence Steele not being the starter at right tackle if he's good to go. Yeah. And then, of course, the next logical one is literally anybody at kicker. I would love to see a training camp where everybody, don't care who it is, could be Vizcaino, could be somebody else. They're like, he's the guy. Kick the football. Well, all right. So the other day, it wasn't, it was uh, Harry Kane, right? That was up in New York. Yes. And now, Kevin just rolled into Miami. Messi, do you think there's any chance Jerry picks up the phone and says, you're on planet Earth? Bones said, anybody on planet Earth? There's a 99% chance Jerry Jones has no clue who (laughs) Messi is. I don't think he does. He didn't know who Aaron Judge was. (laughs) I'm not, I know Messi's way more popular than Aaron Judge. I totally get that. I'm not comparing a, a baseball star to a soccer star. You tell me where in the world... Has ever Messi and Jerry Jones crossed paths that he would know who in the world Messi is? I think is. they had a. Didn't Argentina play at? I can't ATT? remember if he was here though. All right, you think I, I you think Jerry has know. a clue who plays on Argentina's Mike, soccer team? Mike, <laughs> he said the other He's boy. He's not even sure the guys we've named that he want that you want to steal jobs on this Dallas Cowboys team. He's not even 100% sure who you're talking about. Well, he could get oh, an interception you there, for Corey. you. He could get an interception for you. But, uh, no, I, I I agree. Like, the messy thing's a lot of fun. I agree with you on kicker there as well. The last person I kind of do want to see do something that they deserve the spot that they get is Jabril Cox. Yes. The, when, when, when it comes to the Cowboys, like, you can look at it and be like, oh, you got, you know, Clark and Vanderesh and Cox can go... They they run the nickel more often. They run a different type of defense than mo than than a lot. And Jabril Cox, if he was to show out and all of a sudden he actually is playing better than Vander Esch, I would be fine with that. I would be perfectly okay with with that if he shows he can do it. Nothing's suggested so far that he's capable of that.